competition with other plants. Um, the species is unpalatable and not eaten by livestock unless feed is extremely scarce. Um, it causes dermatitis in some people. It can also cause um, dermatitis in cattle and horses, but it's not likely. Um, large plant and tangle in both time and just cultivation equipment. <coughs> um, this is just to show you the, um, the distribution of, um, of Aspergillus fisterensis along the west coast. Um, the dark red dots um, represents the towns, and the red dots um, are the actual population. So Cape Town is here, somewhere here. And then um, Langaban um, is here. And then as you can see from the map that most populations are very close to the um, foundry town. And then there's that one population uh, which is close to Hope Hill. Um, so the last case of us, um, um, is a roadside invader. It grows very close to the road. You can actually see the plant while you're driving on the road, if, uh, especially if it's flowering and you've got a good eye for it. Um, we even saw um, some seedlings um, growing right on the tar road, um, and it also tends to be invasive in Mediterranean regions in deep sand as well. Um, these are our, our eradication plans. So we plan to um, distribute more flyers um, to more places and events on the West Coast, such as the Garden Flower Show, um, to ask people to help us find more populations of these plant species. Um, we also plan to survey um, Asmodilus pestilensis patches in an adaptive radius from each population and along all the nearby roadsides. Um, we're going to treat um, this population um, um, using um, two different methods. Um, so the two, popula the two bigger populations, um, we're going to foliar spray. And then the other three smaller populations, um, we're going to help you just to compare um, which method is the most effective. And then um, we're going to monitor the post-treatment recovery of Aspergillus fistulosus using fixed monitoring points. Um, we also plan to identify areas which are at risk by working closely with nurseries and horticulturists. Um, we hope to determine whether eradication is feasible for this species and what control method is most effective. Um, these are um, the research questions um, we have, which I hope um, we can um, get answers to. Um, the first one is, um, do we need to conduct the seed bank studies for eradicating this species? and why. Um, how can we prevent further introductions of these species in South Africa? Um, another question is like um, the Fowler uh, municipality moves um, um, the, the, the area that's um, the, the, uh, the grass um, close to these populations. So the question is like um, do we let um, the municipality guys uh, move um, these, these populations or, or not? Thank you. Questions? <coughs> questions? Dave? Um, it's a spring flowering, which would suggest that the seeds would be able to survive at least the summer. Um, the best test is to take some seeds and see if they, see if they actually germinate. Um, it's probably, there's, there's not a, geophytes typically don't have big seed max. It's not a, a feature of them, so it probably doesn't, but it's worth testing. We, we have actually collected some soil seeds, some house, um, um, to, to and, and then calculated um, the seeds found in each soil samples. But then we're not sure if um, how is that going to help us to um, um, to, to eradicate the species. Uh, what, what, I mean, the, you can use those seeds for a germination trial and just see do they all germinate? And mm -hmm. some, you know, get the nurseryman at, at Kirstenbosch to advise you on a on a treatment. I think I think Dave, our question in this project was, will it help us eradicate this plant? Because our, our mandate is to eradicate. So, yes. <laughs> so we're thinking, do we invest that effort into a seed bank study? And how will it, because that would be interesting, but will it help us right. eradicate? Yeah. So that was kind of the, the question we had. Well, once, once you've established whether it's got a seed bank or not, you know, you have a good <laughs> idea that if you remove, you know, if you have it, if you know it's got no seed banks, you go in, you clear all the plants before they seed again then the chances are that it's actually not going to come back. So you do like one or two follow-ups to see, just to check. But you, don't, you know you don't need to go back there for 10 years and keep going back because you know that it doesn't have a seat. So that, that's the way to do it. Thank you. 
I would agree with David, it's also very easy to do that. It's not going to, it's not going to take a, a big chunk of anybody's time. Put the seeds into trays, see if they germinate. You've got, you've got your answer with very little effort. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I just ask, um, I like to miss this, I followed it. Okay. Is it a problem anywhere else in the world? And what experience is there anywhere else in the world of how to get rid of it? Um, yes, it is a, a, a problem in other um, areas in the world, um, Australia and um, California. Yeah. What, what, what was um, the next question? The, uh, have they made attempts at getting rid of it? Do they know whether herbicide work better than the Yes, I think they have. Um, All that stuff. Yes, I think they've had um, attempts in eradicating it. Um, I know in Australia they um, eradicating it um, using um, the new superfuron herbicide. They were supposed to spray the, the, the populations with um, with those uh, with that herbicide. I'm not sure if they have um, they, they had uh, um, success on that. The, um, we're sort of following the Australian example because they've made available quite a lot of information about the use of metsulfurin on the species. But because our populations are so tiny, we're comparing, Nalitu is setting up um, a system whereby she can compare, um, I think we're going to um, use metsulfurin on two populations, the two largest ones, and the other three populations um, we, we, we're physically hand pulling and it's very easy to remove them. We're, we're digging them out with the spade and we're going to compare and see because because our populations are so small, <coughs> hand pulling is very feasible at this point, but we want to compare the two treatments. <coughs> I don't know, Cliff, does that <coughs> the, the Californians have also got a problem with the species, but the information is not, not so much available. We actually took it contact the right person there and get a bit more, um, uh, learn a bit more from their experiences. Um, they were, uh, Philip had a question and then Dave? Don't worry, I'll tell you that. Okay, Dave? Just the point is I think you, you need to be careful with something like hand pulling, mm -hmm. just because you can leave pieces of the roots behind and it may be able to grow from that. Okay. You need to check on we that. Could, we could check on that. I, I, I don't know if it can regenerate from root material because it's mainly it, it's mainly a, a seed. A, a, it mainly spreads through its seeds. Um, but but yeah, and then there's a the disturbance factor as well. Mm. You know, so yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. Okay. Yes. You good. said it spread mainly through seeds. Therefore, you've answered the question that Dave brought up about doing germination studies. Yeah. You need to have a look at the germination. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thanks. We were wondering about those things. Exactly. Is there a question on the No? No more questions? Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.